All right, all right, I got a joke. There's a guy who's solving a Rubik's Cube in public, and someone doesn't say, I just peel off the stickers and put them back on. Ha! <laughs> uh, like that would ever happen. Hello, what's going on everyone? It's the Epic Cuber here, and welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to teach you guys how to solve the Rubik's Cube using the Friedrichs method or CFOP, CFOP, whatever you really like to call it. There are a couple of things that I'm gonna require you guys to know before we get started in this tutorial. First of all, I'm gonna require that you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Basically, that just means if it's in a scrambled state, you can always get it back to the regular state just by memory, you don't need any algorithms or anything like that. Also, I'm going to need you guys to know notation, which means right face, left face, U face, D face, front face, back face, all of those different things so that you can do that um, very adequately and be able to solve the Rubik's Cube using algorithms. There are four steps in solving a Rubik's Cube using CFOP or Friedrich's method. CFOP actually stands for the four different things that you have to do. First one is cross, which is just the bottom cross, which is basically what you do for a beginner's method. Second is F2L, which means to complete the first two layers. Second is OLL, which means to, or excuse me, third is OLL, which is orient last layer, which means put all of the yellow or blue facing up. And then the fourth step is P, which is PLL, which stands for permutate last layer, which basically means getting all of these pieces into the proper spot and finally solving the puzzle. In this video, we're going to be going over the cross and F2L. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. The first thing that you're going to need to do is give your puzzle a nice good scramble. I'm not going to give you guys a scramble for this. I think that it's better just because you're going to have to use a little bit more intuition in order to be able to do what I'm doing. And at the end of it, if you make it through, you'll be able to have a more firm understanding of what occurred so you'll be able to replicate it a little bit better. So anyway, let's go ahead and scramble the puzzle. First off, I actually solve from green to blue. So if you typically solve from the white side to the yellow side of the puzzle, you may have to do a little bit more thinking with this tutorial. On my left, we have a fully scrambled puzzle. On In the middle, we have a puzzle which has the bottom cross completely completed. And I hope that you guys will know what this looks like. You have the bars matched up on each side and the cross on the bottom. You should already know what that is if you know how to solve the Rubik's Cube using the beginner's method. And then what we're hoping to accomplish in this video is to be able to solve the puzzle to this state, which means the first two layers completely completed. We're going to do this a little bit differently from the beginner's method, though. Instead of placing in the corners and then placing in the edges, we are going to place both of them in simultaneously. So it's going to be a whole lot faster. We're not actually going to use any algorithms for this. This will be completely intuitive. So it's going to take a little bit of thinking, but once you get it, it'll become very, very simple, and it'll be much, much faster. I'm not going to go over advanced cross in this video, but I want you guys to do a little bit more thinking. Instead of just placing them in very slowly, I want you guys to try and do it all at the same time. I know that this is a little bit more difficult, but you should be able to do it just with a little bit of thinking it through. And it may take a little time to get, but I'm sure that you guys will be able to complete it. Once you guys have gotten that completed, we can go ahead and get started with F2L. Now, there's going to be something that we're looking for in this, and that is called an F2L pair. And no, I'm not talking to fruit. I'm talking about something that looks like this. It has the bottom color that you're solving with. In my case, it's green a completed corner like this, and it's matched up with its edge already. I will teach you guys how to do this a little more in depth. You don't need to worry about that piece there. So it's like, it's a block right here. You have an edge and a corner piece put together, and those are matched up properly. Once we can achieve that, we're going to go ahead and be learning how to insert them into the puzzle. I'm going to be going a whole lot slower, so don't worry, don't click off the video quite yet. I'm going to go through it step by step. This will obviously be a very basic way to do this, and it's just the very beginners. It can get a lot faster and a lot more advanced. So maybe in the future, I'll be able to do a little more in-depth or just from a lot of practice, you guys will start to see the patterns and be able to do it a little bit more efficiently. Anyway, what we get started looking for is we pick a corner piece. So after you solve your cross, you're going to want to be immediately looking for a corner piece with green on it, in my case, because I saw from green to blue. So immediately, 
I notice this right here, this green, orange, and yellow corner piece. Now that I've located this, I'm going to want to look around the puzzle for the green and yellow piece because that will be the one that will match up to these. Because if you look, we have the green, the orange, and the yellow. If I place this corner in, it'll solve this block right here. And then I will need a yellow and an orange edge piece to finish this entire block right here. So instead of doing it one at a time and using that long algorithm, I'm just going to do it simultaneously. So let's go ahead and look around the puzzle for the other piece. Immediately, I can actually see it over here. It's the orange and the yellow edge piece. There is an easy way to do this. If you're a little more advanced with it, you can just turn it over and it'll match up, but you're not always going to get that. So here's what we're going to do. This is a very basic way to do it. You're going to want to put both the edge and the, both the edge, excuse me, and the corner piece up on the top layer. And by the way, what I'm about to show you only works if the color that you're trying to solve from is facing up. So green is facing up away from the bottom. That's the only way that this step that I'm going to show you specifically works. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get this edge piece into the top layer. It's simple enough. You just turn it up, move it over, and place this back down. Cross is intact, and you have the edge piece and the corner piece lined up on the top. Now what we are going to do is we are going to just focus on the corner, or excuse me, the edge piece while the corner piece is still facing up away from its respective green side. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this edge piece until it matches up with a color that, until it matches up with a color. So I see that yellow is facing me right here. So if I turn this puzzle like this, it's going to match up and we're going to have a complete line because yellow with yellow. And then if I were to turn it like this, I would have orange with orange. So I know that this edge piece needs to go right here. Don't worry about that yet though. What we're going to do is we take the yellow piece and we hold it to either side of the puzzle. It could be on the, the left or the right side or the front or the back. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to be holding it on the left. We turn it away from where it needs to go. So we turn it away from the orange side. If we were to put it here, it'd be correct. But we turn it away to the opposite side, which is the red side. And then we take this corner piece, which is facing up, and we move it until it is directly above where it needs to go. So you can see right here that I have just completed a F2L pair. I'll show that one more time. We take the edge piece that's matched up with its respective center and next to the piece where it needs to go, the slot where it needs to go, we turn it away from the slot where it needs to go. We take the corner piece, which is facing up, and we turn it until it's above it. And you can see that the F2L pair is already created. And then we recreate the bottom cross. Now we have an F2L pair on the front. It's very simple to insert it after that. What you do is you turn it completely away, and then you can lift up back to where exactly what you just did and bring it back in. Now you can see that that is already solved into a block, and we can just turn it back down. Now our cross is still in place, and we're already one fourth of the way through. The next one that I'm going to be looking for, I actually already have a case, so I'm gonna look for another corner straight away. I can see that I have the red, the white, and the green corner piece right here. Now what I'm going to look for is the white and the red edge piece because green will already be solved on the bottom and I'm going to need to be completing this layer. And this is white and this is red. You can see it right here. Now you'll notice something. If you're holding the puzzle like this, the green is not facing upward. It is facing out, out of the puzzle. This will be solved differently from the case where the corner piece is facing up. Since it's facing me, I'm going to look for the edge piece, which is directly opposite it. And this is actually the position that you're going to want it to be in. You can see that I, the corner piece is here, and on the other side of the puzzle, the edge piece is. That's what we're going to want. You're always going to want these two colors to be opposing. If this was white, what I'm about to show you will not work. What you want is red with red and white with white opposite though. So we have red with white and white with white and green will be facing down. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take that corner piece. Now that you have this all set up and in the proper positioning, you're going to want to take this corner piece, put it above its respective slot. 
So you can see that this F2L pair will need to go here. This corner piece goes here, and this edge piece goes here. And since these two colors are opposing, we do a R. If the puzzle is facing me and the piece is facing out to the right, we do a R, a U, and an R prime. It's just an easy way to put it. That wasn't really an algorithm. This is all intuitive, but I was just saying that so you guys can get a little more familiar with it. Here's another of the exact same case. I already found my green, red, and yellow, green, red, and yellow corner piece, and my red and yellow edge piece. These, this F2L pair will need to go into this slot right here. Looking here, I can see that the edge piece that I want is not in the correct slot, because remember, I need it to be on the opposite side of the puzzle. So if I have my corner piece here, the edge needs to be here. If I have my corner piece here, the edge piece needs to be right here. I need opposing colors as well. So I'm going, I know that I'll need yellow to be right here. So what I'll have to do is I will have to move this edge piece until it is facing on the opposite side of the puzzle. This is actually quite simple. All we have to do is turn the puzzle or the corner piece until there is a open slot. See how there is no F2L pair in this slot right here. Now I can do whatever I want with this slot right here, and I'm not going to mess up any F12 pair that I've already placed. So now that that's in the back, all I have to do is rotate it up, and that is hiding this corner piece, which means that if I, I can turn this U-face completely freely, it's not going to mess up this corner piece, and since there was a free slot right here, it's not going to mess up my F12 pairs. Then I simply rotate the edge piece until it is matched up to the opposite side. So I have the green, red, and yellow edge piece, as well as the red and yellow edge piece right here, excuse me, corner piece for this one, and they need to be on opposite sides. Then I rotate the puzzle until the corner piece is above where it needs to go, its respective slot, and then I turn the cube into the corner, or excuse me, into the edge piece. So I turn it into the edge piece, you can see that the F2L pair has been created there, and then I rotate it until it is in its slot, you can see it is right there, and then I place it down in. This is the third case that can occur while you are solving a Rubik's Cube using the Friedrichs method and doing F2L. You can have your edge piece, which is the orange, white, and green corner piece, excuse me, and your edge piece, which is the white and orange edge piece, not, this, not differing cover, colors. So you can see that I have white with white. So I know that if I were to pair this in, it would be backwards. getting it back to where it was you don't have to copy that or what I did there so you can see that these two puzzles or excuse me these two pieces will not work if we do exactly what we did there it's actually a very very simple fix so again you turn your edge piece until there is a open slot near it this only works if you hide it with the white face facing out so if I were to do it like this and do it I could rotate this and place it in, and I don't really want to do that. So I need to turn it until I hide this in such a way that I can bring this edge piece to fit this slot right here, and then when I bring this corner piece back up, I will have created my F2L pair. So I hide this, because this is a broken slot right here. I move my edge piece until it is directly above this corner piece, and I bring it up. And you can see that the slot has been created, so there's this slot empty here and I have the F2L pair created right there. Then I simply rotate the puzzle, one away from the open slot. I open it up and insert it in. This will conclude our F2L step. I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like or maybe share it to your friends so they know how to get more advanced with the Rubik's Cube as well. Hope this was helpful. Part two will be up, OLL will be up soon. And hopefully you guys will continue to watch these videos. I'm the Epic Cuber, and you have an epic day. Bye.